Hi, welcome back to Storytime with Susan. We are continuing our book, Nancy Drew and the Clue Crew in the Fashion Disaster. We are on chapter five, so let's get started. Hide, where, George said. The girls quickly looked around the trailer. Nancy spotted a large wire dog crate. Draped over it was a satiny blanket. Lola's crate, Nancy whispered. There's room in there for all of us. Gross, Bess groaned. The girls crawled inside. Nancy gulped as she sat on a rubber steak dog toy that squeaked. George reached out to drape the cloth over the front of the crate. The girls held their breaths as the trailer door creaked open. Nancy could hear Maya walking into the trailer. She also heard the click click sounds like dog paws on tiles. What a time to run out of pictures, Lola, Maya said. Now, where did I put your latest publicity photos? The girls were twisted inside the crate like pretzels. They heard Maya moving stuff around. Suddenly, the click, click, click noise got louder and louder, as if Lola was walking toward the crate. Back, Lola, back, Nancy thought. Lola popped her head under the blanket and into the crate. Oh no, Bess groaned. After sniffing Bess's elbow and Nancy's sneakers, she began licking George's face. George squeezed her eyes and mouth shut as Lola's tongue washed her face. Nancy hoped that George wouldn't yell out, but then Lola began licking George's mouth. Yuck! Ick! Phewy! George yelled, wiping her mouth with both hands. Woof! Lola barked. One by one, the girls spilled out of the crate. Maya stared at them as if they were from outer space. What are you doing here, she demanded. Nancy, Bess, and George all spoke at once. We're detectives. We were looking for clues. And the real person who switched the dog biscuits. Mom, Maya shouted. Maya, no, Nancy said. We can explain. Maya's mom peeked into the trailer. Guess what, honey, she asked. A nice television reporter wants to interview interview you with Lola. It's for the 6 o'clock news on WRIV TV. TV, Maya said. A smile spread across her face. What should I tell them, her mom asked. Tell them we're ready for our close-up, Maya declared. She threw back her shoulders. Then she and Lola marched out of the trailer. I think I've seen you girls before, Maya's mom said. Aren't you Lola's biggest fans, George cut in. And we were just leaving, Nancy added. Bye-bye, Bess said. The girls bumped into one another as they squeezed through the trailer door. As they ran down River Street, Nancy glanced over her shoulder. Maya was happily chatting to the reporter. That was close, Nancy said when they slowed down. She pulled the plastic bag with the paper pieces from her pocket. But we did pick up this clue. And dog hairs, Bess said. She pulled out her hairy fairy wand and swept it across their clothes. I knew this would come in handy someday. The girls talked about the case as they walked down River Street. With all its stores and places to eat, it was the busiest street in River Heights. A woman walked by carrying a Funky Fido Boutique shopping bag. The Funky Fido Boutique is open today, Nancy said. Let's go there and question Patsy. The boutique was just down the block. Its window was filled with all kinds of dog clothes and accessories. Sailor suits, hats, even angel wings. I don't get it, Bess said. 
Why would someone who designs such sweet dog clothes do something so mean? She did say mean things about Lola, said George. Yeah, and I just thought of something, Nancy added. What? Bess asked. Nancy stared at her friends and said, What if Patsy is mean to us? Well, looks like the mystery is deepening. They have their list of suspects. So who do you think it is? Well, check out my next video for the next chapter to see what happens. As always, like, subscribe, and comment, and have a good day.